The rescue of a six-year-old girl has brought rare joy in Gaza, where 42 people died in the most devastating Israeli airstrike since the conflict with the Palestinians began. Neither side is showing any signs of relenting, with Hamas launching more than 100 rockets towards southern Israel. And a warning, some viewers might find these images distressing. From the rubble, a survivor. Six-year-old Susie had been trapped beneath her family's home for seven hours, feared dead. Now she's safely in hospital, hand in hand with her father, but with grief written all over her face. Her father explains that her mother and all four of her siblings did not survive. This is what has caused the heartache, a pre-dawn Israeli bombardment. At least three buildings were flattened, prompting desperate rescues. Several lives were saved, but many people died. This is a funeral for 17 members of one family. The Israelis released vision of one airstrike they say struck the home of Gaza's top Hamas leader, Yehar Sinwar. It's thought he wasn't home, but Israel says it is successfully eliminating what it calls terror infrastructure. A description it's also given to the media tower it toppled, claiming it was shared with Hamas militants. We've asked Israel for the evidence. We'd like an independent inquiry. Was Hamas there? What does the evidence show? Gaza continues to fight, launching another barrage of rockets. One striking the southern city of Ashkelon, damaging a synagogue and setting cars ablaze. The United Nations Secretary General describing the hostilities as utterly appalling. Fighting must stop. US President Biden says his administration is continuing to work towards calm. Palestinians and Israelis equally deserve to live in safety and security. But asked about the prospects of a ceasefire, the Israeli Prime Minister has given no guarantees. And frankly, uh, if Hamas thought that they could just fire on our rockets and then sit back and enjoy uh, immunity, uh, that's false. And just hours after this interview, Israeli warplanes unleashed on Gaza City in a widespread 10-minute long attack. But while Benjamin Netanyahu might be out muscling Hamas, his country is being torn apart by a war from within. Street violence between Jews and Arabs in Israel is escalating. Six police officers were injured when this car slammed into a police post in East Jerusalem. The driver was shot dead. Pope Francis today praying for the innocent victims on both sides and calling for those in charge to end the clamour of weapons and walk the path of peace. In London, Ben Avery, Nine News. And the Independence Middle East correspondent, Bell True, joins me now from Jerusalem. Bell, the fighting has now entered its second week. What have you seen on the ground this morning? Well, we had another very heavy night of bombardment over Gaza. I was speaking to civilians in the early hours this morning. They said they could almost have about 50 airstrikes in just 10 minutes. The Israeli army released a statement this morning saying they are once again targeting what they call the metro system, an underground network of tunnels that militants have been using to attack Israel from. Now, they say they've hit some 35 kilometres, sorry, they've hit some 15 kilometres worth of those terror tunnels um, with... Uh, at least 52 different aircraft. But of course that means that it's very likely that the death toll is going to have risen overnight. We don't have any confirmed numbers so far, but certainly speaking to people on the ground, they said it was extremely, extremely strong. Meanwhile, of course, um, militants in Gaza have been firing back at Israel. It's been slightly calmer this morning in comparison to former days. But in total, the Israeli military say that over 3,000 rockets have been fired at Israel, which is nearly the entire total of rockets fired at Israel during the seven weeks 
2014 war, just to give you a comparison there. So it feels very much like now the ceasefire is not on the horizon. The fighting will continue, and unfortunately, I think the death toll is going to rise. Bill True, the Independent Middle East correspondent, thank you.